But uh, Lord, we just thank you for your word. I thank you that it's challenging and inspiring. And we just thank you for great things this year. Speak to us. Move in our hearts today. And we just give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, we're about to enter our 21-day season of fasting. And it's going to be different for everybody. But uh, so I want to share a little bit about fasting this morning. And fasting can be really powerful in our lives. Now, it's not twisting God's arm to make him do something for us. It's not like a hunger strike. <laughs> it's all right, if I just starve myself, God will do what I want. No, that's, it's not that. Uh, I like this quote that I read from Martin Luther on prayer, and he said, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but it's laying a hold of his willingness. Amen? And there's a lot of different types of fasts, uh, a complete fast would be no food, no water, just just nothing. Uh, a normal fast, what people will do is is no food and only water uh, for a season. Uh, sometimes they'll incorporate juice or some kind of liquid in there, like a broth or something like that, and that would kind of qualify into a, a partial fast, and there's all kinds of partial fasts out there. Like, ever, anyone ever hear of, like, the Daniel fasts? Right, so uh, fun fact: Daniel fast is actually it's okay. The name is okay. Technically, that was just the way he ate, so it wasn't actually a fast, but it was just his normal living. But uh, Daniel fast would be just vegetables or sometimes vegetables and grains. So there's all kinds of fasting. We're not legalistic about it. Um, you know, some may choose to do one day or one meal a day or three days on, three days off, whatever, a lot of ways. Uh, I would encourage you, whatever you choose to do, if you do have any partial fast, try to eat healthy stuff during that time. Uh, it's better for you. Drink lots of water. Uh, it's good, especially if you're detoxifying. And so uh, try to avoid the soda. You know, coffee, that's between you and the Lord. I just tell you, the Lord's okay with me. And I, him and I having coffee together in the morning, so. But low acid juices and stuff like that. Um, so I will say this, though. Like, people will also fast, like, electronics, media, stuff like that. And that's, that's very good. I think um, biblical fasting does include food on some level, though. And I encourage you to do that if there's medical reasons or whatever. You're not there yet. It's okay. Um, when you do break the fast small portions, healthy stuff, easy to digest stuff, don't go hog wild. If you're fasting like breakfast and lunch and having dinner, don't have all three of those for dinner. <laughs> you know, take it easy. And, and long, I, I, that's all I want to say about that part of it. But yeah, if you have questions, just see me or Joanna or somebody in leadership that's done fasting and you won't lose your reward if you ask any questions about fasting. So, but uh, how's the temperature in here today? Or I'm a little warm up front, so I, I think we might have, uh, we, we put it down, then we raise it back up, so we just maybe back down a little bit would be great. I'm always, I'm always hot, so, yeah. I mean, Joanna might disagree, but, you know, but I'm bump But here, let's, let's get into the word. So fasting, fasting has reward. There is reward for fasting. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was probably 10 years old, and I had decided, we had this old pool table in the basement, and I decided I wanted to create this sort of, I don't even know what to call it, like this little miniature land on this pool table. I wanted to turn into almost like a diorama of sorts and build, you know, so I, my dad, it was, it was no longer a good pool table, so my dad said it was okay, and so I, so I started hauling in dirt and building roads and this mountain and, and putting trees in there. And I just made this little, I was like nine or 10 years old. And, and I looked like the guy from Close Encounters, you know, when he was building that mountain. I was like, <sighs> calling it in. Like, what are you doing? And I'm, I'm down in there and I'm making this thing. And I'm been in there ba in the basement for hours. And I would lose, I lost complete track of time. And finally my mom is like, John, have you eaten? And I'm like, no, I'm okay. And it's like hours and hours past dinner time. 
and I hadn't, I don't even know if I had lunch. And she's like, you gotta stop and come and eat. And what happened was, I was so focused on what I was doing, my goal, that I just, I forgot about it. Because I was so focused on what I wanted to achieve. And, and so, you know, I kind of see fasting as that we be not like so focused on, okay, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to eat. <sighs> but not really, that shouldn't be like the main part. The main part is what are we moving towards? That's just ancillary. That's just sort of something that we, we're just putting that aside to focus on something else. And, and at, at the core of it, it's focusing on seeking Jesus, getting with the Lord, spending that extra time with him. We are asking. There is petition. There is seeking. There is listening. It's, it's all of prayer and prayer and fasting. Now, the Pharisees, they were a complete opposite in their attitude when it came to fasting. And, and Matthew 6.16 6, said, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. That's their reward. Getting a little bit of adulation from people. Wow, you fasted that much? Wow, you're so spiritual. There you go, that's it. Enjoy it. That's your reward. Hang it on a wall. Make a plaque. He said, but you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who is in secret, he will reward you openly. So there, there is reward from seeking the Lord in fasting. And whenever I say fasting, just assume I'm saying fasting and prayer, because it, it goes together. But for the Pharisees, the reward was just about themselves. It was about, hey, I want to look good. You know, whitewashed sepulcher type thing. Look good on the outside, didn't care about the inside. That was their reward, looking spiritual. But Jesus says, don't make it about that. He said, you're fasting to God. Make it about him, not to impress people. See, here's the thing. It doesn't matter if people are impressed with our spirituality. It just does not matter. And God, here's the thing, in a way, like, he's not impressed either. Like, if God, like, if I give my kid a gift, and they're like, look what I got, Dad. I'm like, yeah, you, I paid for it, right? It's not impressive, right, you know? Uh, it might impress their friends, maybe, but it's, it's, it's a gift. And also, it's kind of like, when I was a kid, you ever, when you're a kid, you draw a picture for your mom with a crayon, and, like, you draw the body, and the head is, like, for some reason, way off on the shoulder, you know, like way, way off, off to the side, really bad, you know, bad artwork. And what does mom say? Mom be like, oh, that's beautiful, right? So you might go to a museum to see some beautiful artwork, but to mom, that Crayola, awful, crooked-headed drawing looks beautiful, right? And I think that's the way God sees our, all of our works, right? He's glad we did it. He's glad why we did it, because we did it for him. And if it's to, like, hold up any kind of, like, scrutiny and win, like, an actual award, Jesus is the only one who gets the beautiful masterpieces of art, right? But all of our little Crayola art is beautiful in his sight because we did it for him, not because it was so great. So if someone fasts 21 days with only water, wow, good for, that's great. Good for you. I hope you met Jesus during that time. God's not like, you know, comparing that person with the one who fasted one meal a day and messed up on five of the days. He's like, he's like, that's good. That's good. Good job. You know what we were saying? Rick was saying in the men's meeting, we had a good men's meeting yesterday, man. Guys, come on out. We just get together, share a couple of scriptures, and just let the Holy Spirit lead our conversation. And it was great. And one of the things that he said was in, in doing your quiet time, he said, sometimes we could be really critical on ourselves, and like, we're trying to get with the Lord seven days a week, and if we miss four of those days and only got three days, like, man, we look at it and we're like, I'm down in the hole four. I'm negative four. But God looks at it as, I'm up three. Amen? Because it's by his grace. 
He still calls us to it, but it's still by his grace that makes all of our works awesome. So all of our fasting, all of our obedience, all of our serving him, yeah, he calls us to serving him and serving him in greater ways, but it's perfected by his grace and made beautiful in his sight by that grace and love that he has for us. Amen? So I hope that helps you as you enter into this season of fasting. And, and so, uh, I lost my place because I just went on off the notes. But um, when, I, when I was in, the, in that basement, ten, when I was 10 years old, making that little close encounter mountain, I was, I was doing that thing, and I'm, I'm going away, and, and I, I lost track of time. I was not trying to get people to be impressed at how dedicated to the task that I was. It was not so people would come down and say, wow, look at John working in the basement. I, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and make that mountain and show my mom. <laughs> I wanted my mom to come down, and then I guess I probably got some cars and played with my matchboxes on it or something. But I just wanted to have that, that thing, and my mom say, wow, John, you did a great job. And only mom would look at that and see that. I think my dad was like, hmm. No, actually, no, he, he did give me some compliments. I remember he liked my trees. The trees he thought were pretty good. I was like, really? Then I was, you get, you get the compliment from dad, and then you're really sailing, amen? <laughs> but that, that, was, that was my reward. That was my reward. In a way, it, you know, it was, it was kind of openly because I got the approval from my, from my parents. And when we see God in prayer and fasting, not to look spiritual, but just to connect with God and his answers. You know what? He does reward us openly. It says in verse 18, it says, So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in that secret place, your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. And, and it's more than just recognition. It's, it's, it's not recognition like, Hey, look at this. It's impartation. It's answered prayer. It's all of these things. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes my, and my will be open and my ears will be attentive to prayer made in this place. Oh, that's good. That's good. When we just go before the Lord with this humble, and, and when it says humble, that means fasting. Whenever you see that, like when it says, come before the Lord humbly, that speaks of fasting in, in the Old Testament. And, and when we come to him in that way, fasting and, and praying, and there's repentance in there. Listen, there's going to be repentance during this time where God kind of shows us things, and we're like, okay, yep, you got that on me. That's right, that's right. And we just sort of release that to the Lord. Then he says he's going to hear our prayers. Man, how many want a prayer heard, right? Amen. He's going to forgive. He's going to heal. In Isaiah 58, verse 6, it says, Is this not the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens? To let the oppressed go free? And that you break every yoke? It is not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and hide not yourself from the, your own flesh, that then your light shall break forth like the morning and your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard and then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. You want to talk about God rewarding openly? That's it. How about being set free? You ever see somebody who's just in bondage to something, whether it's depression or whatever, and you can see it on them, right? Somebody that's got like an anger issue or somebody that's got um, problems at home or whatever, you know, they may not always say it, but y'all, we all know it, right? Yeah, right? You can tell when somebody's under some sort of oppression. And then you really can tell when they're not under it anymore. You know what I'm talking about? You ever see somebody that just, just set free? 
It's like when somebody gets uh, born again, and sometimes you'll see believers, and they're like, they just got it. They got the faith. They got the joy. And they've been saved two years. And sometimes you can see how they, someone has been saved 10 years, and this person, they just got it. And you're like, wow. That's God rewarding us openly. How many have ever been overburdened? Right? Maybe right now, right? Like, yeah, right now, Pastor John. Sometimes we'll, we'll see it on the face. And don't you want that freedom? Don't you want it? He's got it right there for us. He can loose those bonds and set us free. Now, I recognize, you know, fasting is not easy. Like, most people do not like fasting. I like eating, right? You tell, right? I like, how many, how many are with me? You like eating, right? It's good for us, though, once in a while to say no to the flesh. You know, some people eat. How many of those people that when, you're, they, when, you, when you haven't eaten, you get hangry, right? How many of those people in the, all right, wives, don't, 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 husbands, don't point, don't, don't point it at your spouses. <laughs> they get hangry, you know, or, you know, and so when we do this, there'll be times when, be, when we fail. You know, one time I was fasting. Actually, we were, it was one of the gateway fasts, and we, we had, uh, I'd, I'd been doing really good. And, and we went to Disney World, and so we had to give the kids lunch, and I smelling all those foods. And so finally, I'm like, I think it was like dinner time now, and I'm like, and we go to this restaurant, and it smells really good. And I'm like, you know, we're like right near the end. And I'm like, I could, I, could, I could probably make my fast early. You know, and so I decided, I was like, wow, well, like asking Joanna. I'm like, should I? I wanted her to give me permission. And she's like, you just do what the Lord says. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear you say it's okay. Come on. Pay attention. And so, well, it's up between you and the Lord. So finally, me and the Lord, I guess, you know, said, me and me said, all right, you can do it. And so I ordered this big hamburger. And it didn't even taste good. Twenty dollars, twenty dollars for this Disney frozen, no taste hamburger. I'm like, God, come on! You could have at least let it taste good. <laughs> you know, sin's supposed to be good for a moment. It wasn't even good for a moment. And then I felt so bad afterwards, you know. But God, you know, it's His grace. You know, He wasn't mad at me. He was, he was glad for what I did and stuff. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have some failures. It's going to be hard sometimes. It'll be hard. Uh, even with Jesus in Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 1, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, and he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And for 40 days, being tempted by the devil, he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry, as you might expect. And listen, we know that the devil at the end of those 40 days, right, you know the three temptations that he tempted the Lord with, right? We focus on that, but what we skip over is that it actually says he was tempted for 40 days. It wasn't just at the end that the devil showed up. No, all along the devil was messing with him, trying to get him to fail, trying to get him to quit, you know? So there's battling the whole time. And there's this great quote by Arthur Wallace, and it says, Don't judge the effectiveness of your intercession by your feelings during the fast. Because you'll be wrestling and often feel all sorts of things as you bring your flesh into submission. You know, we'll, we'll, be, we'll have some wrestling. You might have a fight with the spouse, Right? There'll be some battles, there'll be some victories, there'll be some failures, there'll be some stuff. Listen, just repent. You lose it, you get hangry. Now, recognize, like, when, like, fasting is like a self-inflicted trial, basically. And so when it kind of stirs up the heat, and so when stuff happens, stuff rises to the surface, that stuff was already in there, Right? That was just in there. So 
just, you know, just repent. Lord, forgive me and forgive the spouse or forgive whoever or whatever. We might be extra sensitive. Just forgive and, and, and just let God do that work. Amen? Because it's going to be turned up heat and it's okay. And it's okay, to, it's okay to fail. Okay? And it's okay to try and succeed and go for it. Amen? Fasting is like, it's kind of like God's time machine. You ever, anyone here have regrets? Right? Only three people. All right, well, good for you. Great. See y'all. Right? So, like, I, I, we all have regrets. We all have regrets sometimes. We wish we did this, wish we didn't did, do that. You ever wish you had a time? If I could only go back. What was that, what was that show? What was that movie? Oh, gosh. With the kid and the uncle that wanted the time machine. No, not Napoleon Dynamite. You ever see that? And his uncle tried to buy a time machine on the internet to go back and win that game that he lost in college or something like that in high school football so he could be a great guy. It was, it's a pretty funny movie. You have to think about it. Whenever you have a pastor mentions a movie from the pulpit, he's always like, oh, shoot. Is there any, like, how much cursing is in that movie? That's mostly clean, I think. I think it's pretty clean. And, and so, but... Uh, yeah, you wish we could go back and change some things. Yes, Back to the Future. I told Joanna, I was like, how about you put like a TARDIS up on there? Or she's like, no. I'm like, all right. But yeah, we wish we could sometimes go back and change things. Right? But you know what? See, God, we have a God that is a great redeemer. And maybe he doesn't like literally go back and change things, but he can redeem things. And he can restore things. Amen? Joel says this in chapter 2, verse 25. So I will restore to you the years the swarming locusts have eaten. What's that? That's loss. There's loss they experience. And God said, you know what? I'm going to restore that for you. See, he can restore things that were lost. Not going back in time, but he can redeem time. He said the latter rain is going to be greater than the, the former rain. He's got better things ahead that he can do. See, some things that normally take long, he can do it in half the time. Right? Like, we're all the way over here, and I don't, you know, like, you know what? He can speed things up. That's why we can see a believer that got saved for two years and next to one that's been saved for 25 years, and this one's further along. Why? Because they let the Lord do a fast work. He can do fast works in us. And through us and for us, he can redeem that time. See, in the locust, that speaks of, like, the enemy. It speaks of demonic forces and sin and, and stuff like that. See, he can redeem what the enemy has taken from our lives. He can restore relationships. Maybe there's a broken relationship. He can restore it. He can give us new relationships, whether we lost somebody or something. He can, he can bring family together. Amen? He's a, listen, they call, I like to say, they don't call him the pretty good redeemer. What do they call him? The great redeemer. Because he's really good at it. He's really good at it. Man, What's going to happen when we start believing that? I'm telling you, I, I just feel led to say right now, there's some relationships. Start believing what God says about that relationship, marriage, whatnot. Believe God. Don't criticize it and point out everything. Believe God for what he can do. Amen? Because he's a redeemer. Forgive let go. I was reading, the Lord spoke to me on this morning, this is not my message, but he was speaking to me this morning on forgiveness. And I was reading how, and it was, it, it, I, he spoke to me through Peter, when, remember when he saw the animals coming down and all the unclean animals, and he's like, rise, Peter, kill and eat, and Peter's like, no, I'm not going to eat that, that's unclean, I don't eat bacon and lobster, and well, he didn't know what he was missing talking about that just before the fast. You still got like 12 hours. So, but, and, and, and God said what? He said, 
don't call common what I have cleansed. And God showed me that in a new way where he said, when I have forgiven people, I have cleansed them. So when you're holding unforgiveness against somebody, you're disagreeing with what I have cleansed. You're saying they're unclean, and I'm saying no, they're not. They're forgiven. When I hold unforgiveness, I'm like thinking, God hasn't forgiven that. That's what I'm saying when I'm holding unforgiveness. And God kind of was like, you could do a little better forgiving over here, right here in this spot. I'm like, all right. I receive that. Amen? So I haven't even started fasting yet. He's already rebuking me. <laughs> but he can redeem things. He can do fast miracles. And how? Well, it's right there in the same passage in Joel, just a few verses back, Joel chapter 2, verse 12. He says, Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Amen. You know what that means? I love this. And this is, and everything we see, when we see God's grace in the Old Testament, it just makes me think, wow, and it's even better in the New Testament. Right? And I see that, and I say, you know what? He says, come and repent. I'm super, super safe. Right? You know, are, you ever, like, not want to, like, re like, say you're sorry to somebody because they're not a safe person? Right? Because they're going to beat you down. Right? He's not like that. He's saying, you know what? You can come to me, and you can repent, and I'm very safe. I'm gracious and full of mercy. And I'm like prodigal son's dad. Come here, baby. Come here. Give me a hug. I love you. I love you. I forgive you. Let's keep, let's, let's go. Let's get back on track. Isn't that great? That's what he's going to do in us during this time when we go to the Lord and, and fasting and prayer and, and repent. I mean, what if, what if we desired God so much that we're like, yeah, I don't, I don't care about food. I want to seek Jesus. I don't care about checking Instagram every five minutes or Facebook or watching this or doing it. What if I could just take a break on that and just be like, you know, I just want to connect with Jesus. What if nothing was a big sacrifice? And we're like, you know what? Because God is so awesome. You know, what if God was actually more important than whatever? That donut, that thing, whatever our favorite thing is. Right? What if, what if God hears from heaven and does miracles in our midst? What if God brings revival to this place? What if God just starts transforming lives more than he's ever done before? What if people who carried problems and issues and burdens and baggage and stuff start dropping it and being released and free? What if we start being this people that have love like never before? Look out. Look out. That's what I'm believing for. That's what I want. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you, if you hadn't figured it out, I'm not interested in just having church. I want to see a people on fire for Jesus in revival. Amen? Amen? And let me tell you, it's great. It's great. You'll love it. We'll love it because it'll be awesome. Amen? So what, Pastor John, are you asking? Well, I'm asking us to fast. <laughs> in case you didn't catch on. To fast in some way, right? To find that freedom. You know, and, and fasting it is. It's, it's abstaining from food. It, but it could be whatever. Whatever. Just know whatever it is. Wherever you're at. If it's just... It's just skipping that that breakfast in the morning or just 
not getting on social media for one hour a day and praying during that time, or whatever. That's good. That's good. I'm not, there's no, there's no legalism here. But I encourage you to do something. You know, if it's just a meal or whatever. You know, I, and I do encourage you to maybe connect food with it in some way, some type of food. You know, but uh, we're seeking God as well as answers and guidance and things like that. But first, we're seeking Jesus. You know, and his, his eyes and ears are going to be attentive to that kind of seeking. When we seek him with prayer and fasting, we spend that time that we would have doing something else, seeking him. That's why those books are great, by the way. If you haven't gotten a book, let's run out of them. Grab them all. Grab a book and just, you know, if you, get, if you can pay, yay. If you can't, no, don't worry about it. Grab one, and, and it gives you something to kind of pray through and pray the word and do that. Give you some direction during that time. I encourage you to do that. And, and stay balanced. And I, I think this is balance. Don't be too hard on yourself, and don't be too easy. Right? Just kind of be balanced. Like, challenge ourselves a little bit and give a lot of grace. I think that's good. You know, we don't want to be, you know, ah, oh, I did this, and having pride, and we don't want to have condemnation either. Just, just that balance. Be right there in the middle. And so what are we, we're fasting for? We're asking for God to move. We're asking for God to move in this place. And, and be praying for your family. Ask the Lord to lead you personally, not just for the church, but for your family. Pray for your family. Let the Lord lead you in that prayer time and what he's saying to trust him for. Amen? There's this quote from Ravenhill. He said, The man who can get believers to praying would, under God, usher in the greatest revival the world has ever known. There's no fault in God. He's able. He's able to do according to the power that works in us. God's problem today is not socialism or Romanism or liberalism or modernism. God's problem is dead fundamentalism. That quote was like from like, I don't know, 60 years ago or something like that. It's still true. Man, if we can get praying and seeking Jesus, we will see revival. So let's stand. See, fasting is just, be, it's just choosing to be focused on Jesus more than everything else. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. If the prayer team could come up forward, altar workers, come forward. I think there's going to be some people, if, if you want just to have somebody agree with you in prayer, come on up right now. Don't be shy. Just come on up. If the Lord's touching you. Just come on up. They're going to be here to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm believing God to loose some burdens over people during this season. He can do it. And it's not by the perfection of how good we fast. It's just when we decide to seek Him in that way. Lord, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for your grace. Lord, I just pray during this time of fasting and prayer that you just move in each one of us. I pray for testimonies, testimonies of what you've done. Lord, and we just give you praise and glory for what you're going to do in us individually and in this place corporately. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.